Of organisms are mainly found in at temperate latitudes, so they are cool water species. This also means that they are threatened by ocean warming. In the summer of 2010-11, the west coast of Western Australia experienced an extreme marine heat wave. Basically, it was driven by the warm current that runs from the tropical north down along the west coast to the south, carrying warm tropical water along the coastline. And when this current runs particularly strong, the water warms up at more southern latitudes. Twenty eleven was the one of a kind. Normally, the Lewin current is stronger in winter. But in 2011, the Lewin current peaked in February. And that meant it was bringing the warm water warm through the summer in the northwest shelf southwards, the wrong time of the year. So what also happened in 2011 was that the winds died down, particularly in summer, so February, March. And that had the effect of not bringing upwelling water. So what we have in summer is that the southerly winds bring cold water to the surface. So we didn't have that upwelling. So there was no cold water to cool the existing warmer water. So there was two things which was happening. And that's really what the heat wave was about. The marine communities along the west coast responded immediately to this marine heat wave. There were seagrass death, mass killings of fish, abalone populations collapsed, and probably the most prominent effect was that uh, a lot of the kelp forest disappeared. It completely wiped out the whole area that used to be so productive. Everything died. Rock lobster, the kelps. Yeah, the, the reefs were just unrecognisable. A lot of fish lost, abalone stock lost. A lot of our research indicated that in some areas we lost all of the kelp. But what we're actually seeing in the more recent years is some surviving kelp populations. One theory we have is that these kelp populations could have survived the, the increased ocean temperatures in the deep populations. They are less affected by things like increasing temperatures than the shallow counterparts. But we have a theory that there are surviving deep kelp populations of kelp forests, which may also help in re reseeding shallow populations as well. Now this is all very preliminary, we're not 100% sure, but it does provide a real glimmer of hope. And the next steps for us are to go out and find these surviving populations of kelp.